everyone, it's Simon from Higher Plane Games with a review for Super Pixel Racers on PS4, Xbox One, PC and Switch. Uh, this game is a heavily retro inspired uh, isometric racing game for up to four players locally and you can go online as well. Uh, although as, as of this review I've yet to actually find anyone else to race online, although the online servers do seem to work and connect you to it quite fine. The game itself is heavily inspired by the type of uh, remote control racing games that used to get quite often back in the PS1, PS2 and Mega Drive uh, era games. So think Super Skid Marks, think uh, Coro Q, those types of games where you're racing Diddy cars round and it's at that 2.5 graphics feel. I really like that style of racing. Uh, and I always find it quite fun and cute. Uh, and this game pulls that off relatively well in terms of graphics, but it has some really weird game mechanics that don't necessarily amount to a fun experience. And I'm gonna try and break them down for you as I go. So the game uh, prides itself on a few features. The first one is that you are always auto accelerating. So there is no break, you will always be accelerating. And the issue with that is that you then can't break, so therefore you can't then go around corners effectively. So the way how you have to do that is through the game's mechanic of drifting around corners and that gains you nitro, that will then mean that you can boost out of the corner and then get back up to full speed as quickly as possible on the straights. That would be fine if your drifts were easy to control. And the reason why they're not easy to control is because the control schemes are really, really wonky for steering. You have two different methods. The first method is like the modern method, and you have an arrow that's going around your car, and essentially wherever you point the analog stick is where you, the car is gonna eventually point and steer towards. I found that mega confusing, uh, and there's only one other game that I know of that's got that control scheme, uh, and I hated it in that game as well, uh, even though I love that game. But yeah, um, I went for the retro scheme, which is where no matter where your car is going, if you're looking at where the car's direction is, you'll always press left and right and it will go its own left and right to where it's headed. So if you're going down the screen, right is left and left is right. I'm orientated in that way because I've played games like Micro Machines, Super Skid Marks, those types of things where it's always been that way. So this doesn't become like a super hard experience for me. That's actually how these games should be. Um, so I chose that scheme. The problem is, is that the game gets confused as to what your control scheme is up to. So, if you're hitting on, if you're going at vaguely 90 degrees left to right, right to left, or 180 up and down the screen, and you start to hit left and right, the car seems to get confused, and then go the complete opposite way. And you're like, no, that's not where I wanted you to go, car. Um, or it becomes unresponsive, because it doesn't quite know what it wants to do. And I almost found with this game, is that instead of actually just pressing the button and you'll start to steer in that direction, you have to like mega hammer back and forth on and off of left and right to almost push the car like incremental degrees round. But it doesn't explain that if that's the case. It doesn't work most of the time if that is the case. And so you're left with this really imprecise handling mechanic, which then when coupled onto this boost, uh, uh, sorry, drift and boost mechanic for trying to get round corners makes later races so frustrating uh, because as the cars get improved as you get in faster and but harder to drive as you continue up through the ranks of the career mode unlocking new cars and then with your earnings from your wings or just placings you then unlock upgrades so that you can then actually compete with the AI who seem to have a completely different physics background to you uh, it basically becomes that the car is super super difficult to get around corners because you're either going too fast you try and drift but you're going to have to come into the drift either off the track to get on the track to get around the corner because you're now going too fast or you smash into the barriers or it doesn't turn at all because the game's controls aren't responsive and and then you start to think well actually no it's not me that's being rubbish at the game it's actually the game mechanics are set up so that you can't actually get around the circuits properly um, and that's a real shame because underneath here there is there is semblances of some really good gameplay in here. I like the way how the graphics and the music are set up. I do not like the dust clouds that come onto the game screen though. 
so whenever you're doing like a drift in dirt, some dust pixel particles will go onto the screen. When you've got 12 cars going round a track, most of your screen is full of dust. And that's not fun either. You can obscure the, ski obscure the view, but like it does it to the detriment of the game is to be like an ooh look at us we've got a funky pixel effect um, and that becomes frustrating as well um, as you go through career mode it starts to become that actually you need to place in the top three to or to kind of continue on in later levels it's nigh on impossible to do so um, and so some of the actual better experiences is where it starts to break out from circuit racing into uh, rally stages where you're less in an actual uh, circuit and more out in the open road and they're quite fun. There's also drift shows where you have to rack up enough points by drifting whilst boosting at the same time to increase your score as well as um, essentially death matches where you're trying to smash into other cars and eliminate them but you'll only actually cause them damage if you're boosting when you hit them. So imagine trying to do precise driving into other cars when you've got all of that steering drama going on. So I have to say, and it's with a regrettable heart because I was so excited for this, I bought it on day one, uh, that Super Pixel Racers is a bit of a letdown for me. There's a mishmash of ideas that don't quite come together. It feels like it wants to be extremely retro, but it doesn't have the actual uh, precision to pull that off. Um, and the auto acceleration just makes the experience super 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 frustrating to work with because then you're not in control and you can't break who thought that was a good design decision i don't know anyway so thank you very much for watching i hope that was informative um for those of you who are still interested it's out there now and uh you can go and pick it up thanks for watching bye for now this channel is just one of my many projects that cover games music and film if you enjoy any of these and would consider supporting me to develop further in the future, you can do so by visiting patreon.com forward slash Thank you for your time and for watching the video.